In this episode, I'm reunited with Brad Johnston, who is one of my first guides dating back to 1994. His experience, humor, wisdom, and candor is always welcome at my camp. We're covered in ducks as my cousin Justin Ongaro also joins us on this fast-paced, epic field duck hunt, and I introduce Ongaro's random tips to the Hire to Hunt series. Hope they help, and enjoy the show. I'm Claudio Ongaro, and I take people hunting. I woke up one day as a 27-year-old school teacher and said to myself, I'm gonna build a hunting lodge. That was in 1994. Now I lead my dedicated team of guides for 63 days each fall, exposing my clients to some of the best waterfowl hunting of their lives. Controlled chaos, epic hunts across 5 million huntable acres. We are hired to hunt. All right, so this is, this is real cool. You can see how dark it is, right? Full moon was, I think, three days ago. Um, anyways, we were spotting this one from the road, had permission on it, came in. We didn't see a lot of activity, but I knew they were in here. It got hunted on Tuesday, um, and there were some birds, and I really haven't seen much going on here since. Well, they're in this little basin, and, and from the road, you really couldn't see what was going on. So I put a pin on the map, came in the back way. I mean, I've hunted the property before, so I'm familiar with it come and park by this on this top of this hill and I can see them wheeling around flying just in the skyline and I can hear them in their feed chuckle down there. We're going to wake up tomorrow morning, we're going to watch it and it looks like we've got a pretty decent duck hunt right here. So excited to tell uh, uh, Brad Johnson who used to be one of my guides, he's coming out to join us and then my cousin Justin Ongaro is coming to hunt with us and we might hunt with a couple local kids as well. Uh, and we'll see what happens tomorrow afternoon. Hopefully it sticks in the morning and, and see how it shakes down. I'll definitely be waking up here tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, and we're sitting watching some ducks, so that's kind of cool. It looks like there's two different things going on here. There's, well, or multiple things. There's lots of water, so there might be two different feeds, but a few geese landed in front of us on the side hill, and now it's drawing a whole bunch of ducks. And then the water we saw... Last night, it has a bunch of ducks on it, so it was kind of a roost slash puddle, and then there's a roost behind us, so th this is a hunt. We'll be good to go here, just a matter of figuring out wh where and how to hunt it, because there's so much water on this property, and whether we hunt the water or the feed, I'd rather be on the feed, and I want to get a better look at what's going on over here, because if there's a puddle with feed, that's obviously better, uh, right when they're feeding out of it. So we'll just let the morning play out, and we'll take it from there. But we'll be hunting this afternoon, so that's good. That's good. A, a eagles, lots of water, lots of puddles, lots of ducks. It's a recipe for complexity. I mean, there's definitely enough ducks to get it done, right? Um, although I've also, I've also been burned where, you know, these birds are doing it. And then the last thing you see, they're there obviously feeding happily, but they got put there by the, by the eagles. So, I mean, I know we can kill them on this puddle. It'd be nice to have had them settled in where they had some geese. They're feeding on this nice little flat on another part of the field. Eagle put them up. Now they reestablish. So I'm just going to let things play out here for about a half an hour and watch what happens, see what they do, and then make a decision. I know uh, Brad and Justin, they spotted another combo, so they want to hunt some geese too. So we may do that one. We can always hunt this one tomorrow afternoon. So should be all right. Either way, just a matter of gathering the data and making the decisions. Just a great morning to be alive and see all this stuff though, I'll tell you that much. What, what? Audio time, not parish time. See this? Yeah. That's not how we're doing it. Okay. Okay, it's gonna be more like this, okay? So what I want to do is right now the wind's out of the west, but it's, it's gonna kick a little bit more out of the northwest, not much, okay? So we're gonna angle this just a little bit. We're gonna be right there, at the very top of the spread. As the birds approach, they'll approach the main body. So here's what's gonna happen. The birds coming from this side, come along, they'll line up on the main body, they'll follow this leg up, and, and this is like what we call a feed band. So they usually try to get ahead of a feed band, okay? And we're also a feed band. Yeah. So, but if they try to get ahead of us, we end up shooting them right there, right? So yeah. I like to try to finish them in the hole, yeah. and hopefully they'll all be dead right here, okay? okay? So the reason I'm putting this on this side with this leg is if the wind kicks, 
this actually becomes like a leg. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So imagine this being like this. Now their approach will be like this. We still side shoot them, okay? And the only thing we'd have to do is maybe steal a few decoys from here and either trail them this way, and we may not even have to, have, or just take them and bulk up this side just to keep them on track. Okay. Cool? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay out the chairs first, okay? And I'm just gonna angle them a little bit more than west, a little bit favoring the northwest approach, okay? And then you guys can start stabbing around the decoys like you did this morning yeah. and just make them make them disappear. And then I'll start, while you're doing that, I'll run the perimeter, I'll run the legs and all stuff, and then we'll, then we'll all just go together. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool? Awesome. Break! <laughs> Coach Claudio has spoken. I didn't even get back from the truck yet, and they had two down. The wind was perfect. They were sealing the deal right up the gut. And then the wind shifted a little bit as anticipated. We were still good. And then it kicked right out of the north and made a mess of things. But, you know, we made an adjustment. We got rid of a whole leg, and they still drifted over us. And uh, I don't even know how many we got, 60, 70, something like that. I'll update you with that when we have a count. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's 90 with four hunters, so that just changes everything a little bit. That makes it just that much better. Right, guys? Nice. Bam! Awesome. And now we gotta pack up about 1,500 decoys. So it was worth doing, putting them out, but now we gotta put them all away. Oh, well, it was fun. I'm happy. Anytime you can go out and shoot uh, 89 snows and a speck, on an afternoon, I mean, it was pretty good, pretty pretty epic. I mean, and with the wind switch, and you know, things were going for us at the beginning, and then they started shifting against us, and I just, I'm happy, real happy. The guys are happy, they shot real well, given the conditions, and, and you know, that wind started kicking up a little bit, it got tougher shooting, but I'll tell you what, the heavy steel did its thing, and the Benelli's got the stuff on target, and it, it worked really well. I'm happy, they're happy. Okay, so <clears throat> I know I sound like a broken record, but uh, this is an interesting one because usually you don't end up with multiple puddles and multiple feeds. Like usually the birds will all kind of concentrate on one spot. Like this morning they were kind of all congregated in this one area and then the eagles blew them up and then there's about 100 yards in front of me, there's a few hundred ducks on this puddle and they're kind of loafing in there now, but they're feeding just outside of this one. There's still ducks on the feed right there around another puddle. There's a bunch of ducks and some geese day roosting on another puddle 400 yards away. There's some going into this one. And then there's this whole section here between the puddles that's just full. So you'd hunt this one either way. I think, I think a field setup would eliminate the most amount of risk of being burned because when they come out, they're going to come out and feed. And uh, there's something cool about shooting ducks in a dry field, you know, which is really cool. I mean, as much as I love hunting puddle hunts and shooting potholes, we'll, we'll save that, I think, for another day. So this is Brad Johnson. He used to guide for me 25 years ago. Yeah, pretty much. He was 17. He had a youth license when he started back then. And then this is my cousin, Justin. And then uh, we've got two of the local boys coming to hunt with us. They're grabbing some chaffs. So we're going to set up and get this, get this done. You ready? Let's go. Let's, Let's go. It. They're pressuring me. They think we're behind already. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use the Cabela's Renegade blinds. We're going to lay them out. They got the prairie camel, but we're going to dress them up. We're going to make them disappear. They got nice double straps. And we got a work cut out for us because they're brand new. So we got to really get them blended in. And of course, this wind kicked up and the birds are flying, so we might be missing out on a bit of opportunity here, so we're gonna be as expedient as possible. And they cover up real nice, they got lots of stubble straps right where you need them. What I really like is no pins, they're all bolted together. We assembled five of them in about five minutes out of the box. Cut the box open, opened them, popped the doors into place, that's that. I, I just can't wait to, to have these ducks come into these. They're, they're big and they're comfortable. Brad's like 6'2". But, uh, we see a lot of big boys and it's good to be able to hide them in a big, nice, comfortable blind. Very good.
lines, heavy hammer. Tuck this away. I'm ready. Oh yeah, lots of room back here. Beauty. Good job chopping them up, guys. <laughs> What is it? Oh, kill it, yeah. All right, well, you know, we got here. It's, it's hot, it's sunny, it, there's a little bit of wind. I mean, it's opening season. These ducks are not smart at all. They're doing it nice and it's perfect. You know, we got a bunch of full bodies out there, new blinds, robos. I mean, it, it just it's just a classic field hunt in Alberta. It's good. I better get in there though. It's, it's fun. It's fun. What's that? Ducks, I think. Those are ducks. Yeah. <laughs> get all three. Hold tight. Hold tight. Oh. Drill them. Drill them. Get ready. Drill them. Drill them. How many? Two on the right. We better count them. <laughs> There's a bunch of dead stuff. We better get them. We're going to lose control. You can't. Let's rock them up. There's lots of pinnails, too. Well, it's all good now. What? You, it's not four anymore. Well, we got these two. Why don't we kill these two? Where? I don't know how many we killed. Oof. Might have gone a little heavy on the full bodies for a duck hunt. Oh yeah. Mallard there. Yeah. We got no, these one. are all pin tails. I thought two. I picked up a mallard. No. We got two mallards. They've all been pin tails. <laughs> all right, they taste So just put uh, so three. put eight behind on each one. Side. Let's just do one side. Huh? Yeah, let's just do uh, full one side. So where you got? You got two, four, Hang on. six. Hang on, Brad here. I got three. Okay, bring me uh. Give him two more. Two and then <laughs> that's two, that's good. So start another pile. I didn't know. I thought you might What's have that? shot your foot off or something. <laughs> there. So we got eight. eight, eight nine. Yeah. Oh, got okay, this is a nice flight. Get ready, boys. Get ready. <laughs> roll them. Roll them. Roll them. Oh, nice shot. Hit it hard. <laughs> I like this shot, man. Hey? I like these bullets. Oh, Is notice there's no cripples running around. Did you hear that whack? Heavy hammer. Like, you know when you hit them with steel, they sit and they quiver? Yeah. Like, they're done. You right? got three off. Three on our right. It's all right, guys. Like, there's 3,000 ducks. We're halfway done. <laughs> Oh, let's let these four go and go with the big flight, okay? Get ready. They're just lining up, I think. Oh, there's enough targets right here if they do it. Let's kill these. Go, go, go! This is good ammo. I'm unloaded properly. What? I didn't have my first show. Oh, get ready, get ready. Is it working? Oh, God. Ready? Go, go! The first one that wasn't in. Oh! Must have got sidetracked. Leading them enough. No, over, I was overshooting the cannon because I'm, I'm swinging pretty far in front of these. I find I shoot behind cannon this way. I'm on fire today with these. I feel good. Well, you, you know, there's other guys shooting, but I mean, you kind of, when you're a bird, you just know. 
But can you hear the pellets hit? Like it's hammer. Heavy hammer. I think they should have called it sledgehammer. How many we got here? Oh no. One, two, three, four. Oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's eight. Start another pile. We need six here. He's got eight. We need 14 more yet. You ready, boys? Let him get in. We could make it sporting. Here they come, here they come. I want to get them right over the robos, guys. Because that's where that GoPro is. Hang on, hang on. Let him go around, let him go around, let him go around. What about these? What's that? So this is just fun shooting. We can, we can watch a few flights. I'm good with watching some flight. All right, get ready, boys. We're going to go on these ones. Let's get them in nice and tight. Ah, roll them. What the heck? Whoa. I only shot one time. Helicopter that one. Let's wait for some good flights to do it nice. Oh, we got one more. I got eight here. Eight, eight, eight. eight, eight. Six, do you have any? Four? No. No, so we got eight. Eleven to go. Eleven to go. Eleven? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna shoot on the next volley then. What's that? So I'm gonna shoot on the next volley. Yeah. I didn't have any shells. Oh, really? I shot one time. I shot, I got two. Ah. I'm making fun of Braden for doing a rookie move, not putting one shell in. I had no shell. <laughs> the play on the right. This one's gonna be in the blocks, boys. Nope. They're looking at the puddle. Oh, they're peeling off. All right, boys, get ready. If they center, we'll get them right. We're gonna get them right in the stall, okay? Just hang tight, oh, hang tight, hang tight. Get them centered. Right on the robos. Go, go, go! I shot three. Hang tight, hang tight. Get them centered. Right on the robos. Go, go, go! I got two. I shot one. Only uh, shot twice. Well, but you can count some people shoot the same bird, right? But I know three are down for sure. Let's count them. Now you have to count them. Now we gotta count Nice shooting, boys! Totally redeemed yourself. That's it. Nice. All right, so you saw that. I mean, it's not like we were exactly challenged. Uh, and I know, Brad, you've been guiding for 25 or 27 years. You haven't shot the heavy hammer before. Like, what do you think? It was pretty impressive today, I will have to say that. Yeah, they, it hits hard, you know? Yeah. You got. You had number two shot coming out of there at 1,500 feet a second and 15% of it is bismuth. And when it hits, I mean, they fold and they crumple. And, and the last two shots, you know, Braden and Dylan made, they were out there and they just fold and crunch. It was pretty cool. And that's it. I guess it's time to go for steaks, cut some breasts out of these guys, make some duck poppers. And, Filipino poppers. And uh, yeah. it's supper time. Head on. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so we're just gonna carve up some uh, duck, and there is nothing better, hey, bones in these young, very tender, tender, very, very tender. tender. So we're gonna make uh, duck bites. We got back real early. We're not hunting in the morning, so we're just gonna have some duck bites, 
and some cocktails, and then we're gonna get up early in the morning, go spot, and so we're gonna enjoy, huh? We definitely are. You should see this guy with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tear them open and you can... You don't need a cut? Yeah, we don't even have to get... Oh! We should have fired up the barbecue. Well, he's got a marinade for a bit. That's true. This is a Cabela's knife, too. Eh? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Just nice. bought her on sale. Nice! This is why we have professional Just... cooks at the lodge. There we go. We've been at this for four hours and we have one duck bite made. <laughs> They're coming. Oh, that's a whole lot of yum right there. Mm. All right, so here's the deal. We got high winds right now. And uh, I mean, we got to set this up. I got to put these birds literally in their lap, like five to 10 yards, so they can actually shoot these things because when the wind flares. Now, when the birds flare, they can get out of the way real quick. So what I normally do, is run downwind and to the side, but what's been happening is these decoys we're using, the birds like them so much, they fly right in and over the decoys. So if we're downwind and to the side, the, the, the geese will approach that way, but then the ducks will get right into the decoys. And we're doing multi-species, you gotta understand how they react in anticipation so you can actually put them in front of the hunter. So we set up the Cabela's layout blinds all together in a big line, filled the gaps, so we may call it a unit blind, and then we're right in the hole big downwind U um, with the bulk of the body right right in behind us and as the birds approach it should target to try to get ahead of us we're gonna shoot them when they're right right in front of us it should work you know they just they just love these new decoys I got a couple hundred spec decoys out there some Canada's I got some uh, uh, spinning wing decoys and I got some clones out there as well so we got the full full Monty out here and hopefully we get it uh, we get it done here this afternoon that was awesome yeah, we, we uh, probably just had a great hunt. We slayed them, a ton of fun. Those birds come in at the end, but we just got to sit there and lay there after we had our duck limits and just watch them. Unbelievable, unbelievable, greatest day.